This is our Star Wars gaming panel. We are so thankful that you could join us for this special occasion. Um, and with me, I have some amazing people here tonight to talk about our love of Star Wars games and what they mean to us as part of the whole Star Wars fandom. Um, so with, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Kevin Belling. Right. Mr. Steven Umayan. Mr. Jared Silvius. Mr. Clayton Krantz, and Mr. James Wiest. All right. Well, well. First of all, thank you all so much for for coming on to talk about your talk about your Star Wars gaming memories. Um, I know there's a lot to talk about, so let's dive right in. Um, so I think so. I think for a lot of us, um, one of the earliest things. For us when it comes to star wars fandom in terms of what we remember is our first star wars video game um and james i like james i like to start with you um because you had, we had talked in the chat panel beforehand how you probably had like the the oldest experience when it comes to star wars games so what what are so how did you get into star wars games what was your introduction Oh, I feel a little called out on that one. The oldest one, jeez. Um, I go all the way back to the Atari uh, 2600 and the Empire Strikes Back video game. Back with the little line of a snow speeder chasing after the AT-ATs trying to take them out. And that was really my first introduction to Steven Star Wars because at the time I hadn't even seen the movies yet. Yeah, so that was really my introduction to it all. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and that and that was pretty much like you just took the snow speeder and you just had to shoot uh, Imperial Walkers. Is that right? That that was pretty much it. And <laughs> you failed miserably because those games were just unforgiving back then. Yeah. Now i I've, I've seen I've seen footage of it. Um, I you know I like to play them one day, but I imagine they're pretty hard to get. Um, but yeah. But yeah, no, no, that's good. That's fantastic. Um, Mr. Clayton, how about you? Well, let's see. My my experience starts in, I want to say it was in 1992 with the first Star Wars Rebel Assault, um, which honestly, not a lot better than that Atari and, uh, and or the later Nintendo system, you know, sky, side-scrolling adventures. Um, it was basically a point-and-click so you would you know, you would be able to shoot and the game moved for you and or you'd be able to fly the Millennium Falcon but the game did everything else for you. Um, it was uh, very rudimentary, I will say, but I I remember you know loving the films and watching the films over and over and over again and then being exposed to this brand new story of this rebel spy on Endor and all of these great places that I'd seen in the films and all of the new places and. It, it really opened my eyes to the fact that there's such a, even at, even back then, there was already a much wider universe, a much mm -hmm. larger universe. Um, and so that was, that was really special. Definitely got me into it. Yeah. And they, and they made two of those, didn't they? They did. They did. Um, I actually played the second one first just because it came out. My parents bought it for me um, as a Christmas present. And then I went back and found a copy of the first one and played that. And the second one is quite a bit better than the first one was. <laughs> um, video gaming in general, on you know, it was 3D. Um, it had full sound. It wasn't you know the MIDI sound. It was actual. You could hear the actual soundtrack and everything. Like that was a big deal in those years. But uh, it was still fairly rudimentary. Mm -hmm. Well, fantastic. Kevin, how about yourself? I know, I know you're one of one of the bigger gamers of this group, because um, because you do you do a lot of streaming yourself. I say I want to say the first Star Wars game I played was the original Star Wars game for the original Nintendo. But the pain in the butt Tatooine levels, I hated those. Like the, like this? Yeah. It's the. Uh, I, was, I haven't played them in forever, though, but I still have them somewhere. Yeah, yeah. For for the for those viewers who are wondering what this is, um, this uh, limited run games they they had a run where they made physical uh, productions of the Game Boy and NES versions of the Star Wars game. 
Um, so yeah, I managed to get the game. Bo- I managed to get the Game Boy one, and ga- Game Boy games pretty fun. It's short, um, but it is hard. Um, did you ever play any of the other um, NES Star Wars games? So I, I have all the other NES Star Wars games. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah. Why does that not shock me? <laughs> and uh, I still have it. They're, they're all at my parents' house, along with the with the consoles too, including my dad's Atari. <laughs> check check to see if he has any Star Wars Atari games. Yeah, I know he had one at least one of them. I think he has Empire too. So. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, Jared, how about yourself? What, what was your first foray into the world of Star Wars video games? So, my first foray would have to be the original Battlefront. Oh, okay. The pandemic Battlefront from 2004 or three, I think it is. Yeah, that I sounds about it, right. I played it on my PlayStation 2, which was my first console, and that has a lot of memories for me. They played that, and then the second one when it came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had I had both of those too. Those were really good. And then Stephen, last but not least, from memory, I believe my first one was the two thousand one Rogue Squadron two on GameCube. And thank God I got into that because that was probably one of the best Star Wars games ever made. Honestly, I got a good start. Um. As a kid, I remember, (laughs) yeah, um, when I was a kid, I remember how difficult it actually was to complete the missions, because when I was a kid, I didn't know what I was doing half the time, and when I completed a level, like, I didn't even know that there was, like, certain medals to unlock, like, there was, like, three different stages, or you either got nothing because you took too long or something, (laughs) but after going back to it, um, since Squadrons got announced, I played a couple times, and I just realized just how difficult it is to get like the highest rank on every single one of those missions. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah. My, I actually, I actually, my, my first one was the first rogue squadron for the N64. Like I remember getting Chris, I remember getting Christmas of 2000 um, and it was a, it was a used copy. So a lot of the stuff was unlocked. So like you could, so I can fly as the Naboo Starfighter. Um, I can do all the missions beforehand, um, and that and that was and that was a lot of fun. I I played that constantly, and then and then obviously more more and more Star Wars games started coming in up until today. Well, f- well, fantastic. No, I think those are for Star Wars introduction games. I think those are really good entries um, t- to start with um, in terms of developing our love and fandom. Um, but yeah, yeah. On the topic of Star Wars games, you know, we've seen so many, we've seen so many created, you know, a lot of them, you know, go over the events of the original, you know, of the original movies. Um, but they've all, but they're also unique in that they've really had a, they've really, a lot of them have been able to make their own stories, um, that have been able to stand out in their own right. Um, so like Shadows of the Empire, you know, a lot of us got introduced to Dash Rendar. Knights of the Old Republic. I mean, that is that is a classic in its own right. Um, but but there's but I think there's and and some of you have pointed out too, but there's probably still more, you know, stories out there that could use the video game treatment. Um, and I was curious, you know, is there any any game out there that you would like see made that focuses on a particular story from legends or canon or a particular character um and and we can go in reverse um, this time so steven is there any particular game that you'd like to see well honestly what i want to see would have been the canceled force unleashed three even though people say force unleashed two wasn't that good but Ever since the whole Disney, when Disney bought Star Wars, Starkill was made into Legends content, and he almost became canon from becoming an Inquisitor in the Rebels show. But after what happened to him, like he was a really powerful character, he would destroy everything. He actually used Force powers like, like no one else did. So what I would love is kind of like a Fallen Order type of game focused around Starkiller, into canon material more than anything. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah I'd, I'd play that. <laughs> also, it, Fallen Order. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, they just they they got they just they just need to find a way to bring Star Killer, the character, back into canon because because we have Star Killer base. Um, Jared, how about you? Is there any? Do you have a dream Star Wars game um, that you would like to see made? For me, I would honestly love to see something, a game set in the Mandalorian Wars. Not like the old Republic setting, which is after the war, the Jedi Civil War. I want to see, like, would like to actually play during that big time area where Revan was leading all the Jedi against the Mandalorians. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. No, I, I, had to th- I had to think for a little bit about about which period but yeah nope i totally got it um kevin how how about yourself what star wars game do you think they should make Uh, i'd love to see a remastered star wars rebellion it was one of my favorite things back in high school i still play it on occasion but it's in major need of an update for the graphics yeah the graphics are a little rough at this point was that was that the one that play that played kind of like civilization a little bit like you had the big galactic map and you had all the planets and the subsectors and you built okay. them and stuff okay and shipyards and just just make it because the one i remember playing a lot as a kid was galactic battlegrounds that was the that was, that was a just ridiculous game yeah that it was it was age of empires but with star wars right oh a very thin veneer of star wars because i remember digging into the instruction manual or you know the manual that came with the game at one point and seeing that they had uh, made a typo and kept the Age of Empires content in for one of the units, as opposed to switching it over to you know something in universe for Star Wars. Yeah, they just totally flubbed it because it was that close to Age of Empires. <laughs> yeah, no, my my dad had it installed on his computer, so I we didn't have the instruction book. So so I was just so I was pretty much going in blind as to what mm-hmm. to do. But yeah, no, that that that's what got me into Age of Empires. And then I remember my parents like finding out that age like the I think it was the second Age of Empires. Like my brother saw me saw me play it once and it was just like he was just like, James, that game has blood on it. And he ran me out and I was just like and my mom's like, James, no more Age of Empires. Just like, damn it. Um but but yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what? So what? What was it? Rebellion. Mm-hmm. Okay, rebellion. Very cool. Um, Clay- Clayton, how about yourself? Um, is there any Star Wars game that you'd like to see on any particular event or character? So I really want to play all of the games that have already been mentioned, um, especially going back to the Mandalorian Wars and and playing through. Revan, Revan's fall to the dark side I think that would be just awesome maybe better than Knights of the Old Republic but I don't know that 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 one's pretty much the top for me um, but as far as things that I, games and and experiences that I would really love to have one I would love to see a remaster of Republic Commando because um, there's all sorts of mods out there for it so you can essentially make a remaster of it now, but I'd like to see a new version of Republic Commando that switches to the Imperial Times, and admittedly I'm a little biased on account of um, Shadow Stormtroopers, but I'd like to see a similar squad-based squad game based on Shadow Stormtroopers in the time of the Empire and some of their operations that they carried out. Uh, Rep- Republic Commando was another one of those games I played constantly, and like when I got when I got to the end, like once they were done with their mission on Kashyyyk, and then it's just like, all right, I can't wait to see what's next. And then comes to Christ, I was like, wait, that's it? Wait, wait, what? <laughs> it was very harsh. Very I know. harsh. I know, but still very good. Um, never did find out what happened to Seb. <laughs> I know. The super battle droids in that game are the stuff of they, nightmares. Yeah. Right. We canceled Karen Travis's last book as well, so we got none of that. We got a little little tidbit of what, what would have been in there, and that's that's all we ever got. But but they're technically canon now, thanks to Clone Wars. Yes. 
Thank you, Dave Filoni. Yes. So there's hope. Um, and and then James, finally, we come to you. Um, is there any Star Wars game that you'd like to see for a particular era or character? Well, it's it hasn't really been done before, and other than minor appearances, but I would still absolutely love to see something that focuses solely on Darth Vader, perhaps through the where he first joins the dark side, something between episode three and four, exterminating all the Jedi after Order 66, going through different planets and taking everybody out. I mean, just something really focused heavily on him and just all the violence and carnage that he likes to embody. That, yeah, I think that'd be kind of cool because uh, Force, Force Unleashed kind of kind of tiptoed into that a little bit, especially like the first mission. Yeah, the prologue you played as him on Kashyyyk. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, the only other game I can think of where, you know, you could be a Darth Vader powerhouse would probably be Soul Calibur IV. Uh, to a certain extent in the Battlefront games, he's he he's kind of a powerhouse. Battlefront two. Oof. Battlefront the original Battlefront two. Right. He decided the twenty seventeen. The 2017 one, he's probably easy top three, too. He's nuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Yeah, no, if I may add on to this, a game that I really would have loved was the canceled Star Wars 1313 game. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I would have loved to see that. Disney. Yeah. Luke, I heard that got canceled. Luke Arts, if you're watching, please, please bring that back. It looks so good. What about the Darth Maul game as well? Arkham Knight mixed with Darth Maul. Yeah, I would have played that over and over again, over again, again, like like the Arkham Knight series. Like, wow. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. No. It's, it, yeah. In terms of like you know what I like to see, um, and this might this might be a, might seem odd, but I kind of like I kind of want to see a, a Star Wars JRPG. Like a Star Wars game that plays like Final Fantasy, like, and I know, and I know that seems odd, but, but, but then I'm thinking, well, Lord of the Rings: The Third Age kind of did that with their battle system, so, I, so I don't know, I, I know, I know, like RPG wise, like I think, I think the Kodor, the Kodor system is probably the best way to go, um, but, but I don't know. But yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of clunkiness to Kotor. You know, I I love Kotor; it's one of my favorite games. But it it could be clunky, especially with all. Just do you all remember all of the running? Yes. You spend hours in that game just running from place to place. Well, uh, well, well. The well, you spend like all that time on Terrace, like, like after a while, it's just like I want to get I want to get off this planet. Yes. Uh you know, and and not not disrespecting Terrace. It's a it's a great planet, and you know it was anyway. <laughs> right. It was. Yeah, but like no, like playing as a kid, just like like I want to get off this planet. I want to get my lightsaber. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, but yeah, no, yeah, no. I think those are those are all great, you know, suggestions for what we want to see in the future. Um. But I think, but I think moving on, um, and Ke- and Kevin touched on this as well. Um, you know, there's a lot of classic Star Wars games out there, but there's probably a few that could des- that probably deserve a remaster or two. Um, and you know, we've seen plenty of you know other video game franchises who've gotten the remake remaster treatment, um, and some of them have turned out pretty great. Um, others, you know, still a bit rough. Um, but but is the, are there any Star Wars games that you think deserve a remaster or remake? Um, and Kevin, we can start with you. Um, I know you already gave um, your rebellion answer. Um, are there any other ones you think that might deserve a remake, remaster treatment? The original Dark Forces game. Mm. Yeah. Which yeah. This is a texture mod that was put out a couple of years back, but I don't think it's been updated recently. Yeah, it looks great. Like a dedicated remaster for it would be amazing. That that that'd be cool. And 
that'd be that'd be kind of cool and it might that might be possible because i know they've been i know recently they re-released like like jedi outcast and jedi academy for various systems and they did some updating there but not not a ton but hey it runs now so that i'll take that (laughs) yeah yeah i i tried playing the first dark forces game and I was I was never never able to quite figure it out like in terms of control like I had tr- I was playing like on, on a DOS emulator so I was mm. kind of having trouble trying to map out the keys and whatnot. Two addendum the original Tie Fighter game too. Isn't that Squadrons? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, uh, Clay. Clayton, how about yourself? What do, what do you think deserves the remake remaster treatment? So this may catch me a lot of flack, but I really enjoyed the game Star Wars Demolition back in the day. Um, oh. Essentially a race race destruction derby sort of game. Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal, but, but make it Star Wars, exactly. Um, it was stupid, and the combat was not great. So more than just a graphics remaster you know i feel like um take the people who make some of the need for speed games or um oh there's a bunch of other great racing games now that combine racing and you know vehicular combat take those folks get them to design a new render and make it star wars um i would i would play that all the time because i definitely played a lot of that game silly as it was on playstation back in the day well, it can't be sillier than Super Bombad Racing. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> that's that's totally fair. That I had forgotten about Super Bombad Racing. <laughs> thank you, but also no thank you for reminding me. Clayton, what about uh, Pod Racer? Racer. So I I played um, the. It's on Gaming Galaxy or galaxy of games or whatever the heck it's called um i played racer again the other day and it could use a graphics remaster for sure but i i, st- I still think the gameplay is pretty tight i'll be honest especially with a with a controller like i played it back in the day with a mouse and keyboard which was a mistake um i got through it i actually beat the game but it was not easy um, playing it, going back and being able to play it with you know full controller support on um, GOG that was that was special. Took me took me way back. Um, <laughs> honorable mention: a game that should never be remastered, and in fact should also be forgotten about, along with Super Bombad Racing, is the uh, the official Star Wars Phantom Menace game because yeah. that was a turd. There. There was there were a few episode one games, weren't there? Because there was the main game, but didn't they also? But didn't they also? Obi Wan. Power battles. Obi Wan. Power Power Battles is the other one. Yeah. Power Battles. Obi Obi Wan was different, but the main game. There were so many issues with that thing. Yeah. 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 I I remember I remember seeing like all like whole bunch. Like especially when the movie came out, like all these episode one games coming out. Um, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, you're probably right. That <laughs> that should probably just stay away. Just um, stay in the dustbin. Yeah, episode two, may, maybe we can think about doing a remaster. We could talk. We could talk about that. One. <laughs> um, uh, James, how about yourself? Do you think they should remake any of the Atari games? For the oh, no, no, those just need to die with the Atari and just be <laughs> forgotten about because we don't need that in our lives anymore. I don't think kids would know what to do with a joystick and a little button to push and not anything else because it just would be terrible for everybody. <laughs> but as everybody's mentioned, Knights of the Old Republic, that, that should easily be remade and, and redone. That That's no question. But one that I would like to see and may even be odd for me because I don't I'm not normally mention bounty hunters, but the actual bounty hunter game with Django Fett from the 90s. That was always the fun one that I remember. Mm. You stole my pick. No, oh, <laughs> oh, that's what that's what you were gonna that's what you were gonna <laughs> quick. I was gonna pick that one. Quick, what's your runner up? 
Uh, Empire at War. Oh, Ooh, good choice. The RTS. I would love to see a full remaster of that. I know there's a community mod remastering it, but I would there, love to see a full official. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, Ke- Kevin, you you sometimes stream Empire at War, don't you? Or am I thinking of someone else? Yeah, I've streamed it for a bit. Okay. Thrawn's Revenge mod I, that I played with, which completely changes how the game is played, especially now because they're still updating that mod like every few months, adding new stuff, and like they've added a political system to it now. Oh wow! Yeah, you can not control a planet but influence it, and it will change to years without you having to actually go and conquer it with your army. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Because I, yeah, I remember I had a, I had a few friends growing up who had the game, and it was kind of cool watch, watching them play that. Well, yeah, good choice. And Stephen, we come to you. Are there any games that you think deserve the remake, remaster treatment? Well, I always talk about Rogue Squadron 2, but honestly, I think that game needs to be remastered in HD and brought over to the next-gen consoles. I think it would look amazing, especially with the whole Squadrons thing coming out. I think having one of the best games, just remaster that, it'd be amazing. <laughs> Have like all the new, maybe even add some more stuff to it, because I know um, Rogue Squadron 3, the one after that actually had like ground-based thing where you can actually go around and blast, too. And not just have to use a fighter. So you, I guess Rogue Squadron 2 or Rogue Squadron 3. I'd love to see a remaster one of those. You know what You know what they could do is they could do what they did with the Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Plug it all in one. Exactly. <laughs> all three games. Yep. Just just do that and call it a day. Yeah. No, that I, sounds like value for money. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. absolutely. I'll make a limited edition run too. Six months. <laughs> yeah no I, I i do think the rogue squadron games i think i i think i do think need a second life because those games are just fantastic like in terms of control the ships the cheats that you could put in mm-hmm. yeah keep those in there too <laughs> <laughs> fantastic yep yeah, well, so so far so good, everyone. Um, these are fantastic answers um, for viewers, and just as a quick reminder for those who are just joining us, um, we are still we are still doing our charity run um, for Make a Wish Foundation um, through Twitch. Um, so if you're watching, there should be a link for the Make a Wish Foundation. Just click on that, and then it'll take you through the steps on what you need to do next. Um, but moving on, um, I've been getting questions um, from my from a couple of my chat groups. Um, and one question um, that I thought was really interesting, and it's not really video game related. Um, let's talk about some of the tabletop game, Star Wars games um, and sort of our experiences with those. Um, Jer- Jared, have you played any of the tabletop games like Armada or, or the miniatures or any of the tabletop RPGs? So I am actually, I've been a dungeon master for about five years now for playing D&D 5e edition. Uh, last year at college, I found, a, I found a set of rule books for a Star Wars version called Star Wars Saga Edition. Tabletop D&D style campaign. Uh, all the rule books were online. I had to find PDFs of them. And it was really, really fun and interesting. It took a D&D 3.5 edition and converted into Star Wars where you started off with every player being the same level like a normal D&D, except every enemy could just about one-shot you because blasters do a ridiculous amount of damage. And I started a campaign in there playing an Old Republic campaign, basically having them like go through the Mandalorian Wars. And I had a friend who broke the system by playing a Wookiee that used melee weapons and had a 20 strength. And so he did have a base damage of 10 damage without even rolling to hit. And it was a great time with my friends learning how to play that. And that's my experience with tabletop games. Wow. Yeah. 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 Cause, cause I know there, cause I know there was an official um, Star Wars D20 system from, from wizards. I remember, is that the same one or is that just, or is that like a, like a fan mod that someone did? 
Uh, Star Wars Saga Edition is the one from Wizards of the Coast. Okay. It was okay. an official one. It's discontinued now. The new one is um, Fantasy Flight Star Wars RPG that used a narrative dice system. Yeah, like this. Yes, I've been trying to get people together to play that because I really want to try it. Yeah, yeah, I I got the Age of Rebellion and the Force of Destiny one. Um, well, very cool. Um, Clayton, how about yourself? Um, any experience with the tabletops? I admit I have many v- virtues and an equal amount of vices. Um, the tabletops are not part of the virtues or vices for me. Uh, <laughs> I, I've looked. I've looked at the miniatures because I like, um, you know, the engineering aspect of um, you know, creating Star Wars ships and crafts and all that sort of thing. So I've looked at collecting just the miniatures just to have them. Um, mm-hmm. But even that, it, it's a daunting amount of expense. Um, so I've just plowed that money into more armor. Gotta have. Always gotta have more armor. Yeah. Um, so one of it's it's on it's on my list one of these days to even start gaming with it. It's just not happened yet. Yeah, I, I think I've seen a few people who've had a who've had a sizable collection of like the X Wing miniatures yeah. for the X Wing game from Fantasy Flight. There's a star. There's a Super Star Destroyer miniature related yeah. to that game that I want pretty badly, but uh, <laughs> they yeah. are expensive. Oh lord. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've, yeah, I think about, oh, would it be, that'd be cool to have, but I've got enough plastic, plastic collectibles as is, so. Yeah, it is interesting about Star Wars collecting, going off on a slight tangent there, how much of what we collect is plastic. You've got action figures, you've got Funko Pops, you've got uh, all of the old school lightsabers before the Master Replicas ones or the, you know, newer Hasbro ones. All of it's plastic. <laughs> No, yeah, absolutely. Which now, now that you mention it, um, just just as a reminder, um, we are going to have a panel this this weekend um, featuring our members showing off their various collections, and that will be from Saturday six to seven p.m. Um, so if you're interested interested to seeing what sort of big collections some of our members have, feel free to tune in. Um, and. Um, James, um, how about yourself? Um, did you have any? Uh, did you ever do any of the Star Wars tabletop RPGs or miniatures games? Unfortunately, I have not. Um, it would be something I would like to, to mess around with and do, but I probably I don't really have the room for it in my house because well, even my own costumes are kind of tucked into corners at this point. But uh, I remember seeing just the other day uh, one of our other members. Uh, Ken Jones, he has this massive setup in his house, and it just looked so much fun. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> kind of jealous, and I'm almost as willing to ask him to, you know, kind of come up and can we go play? <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, no, I, yeah, like I'm always amazed at like you know people who do like Warhammer. Like I'm always amazed of like you know they collect all that stuff and how in, how intricate everything is, you know, just to play. And it's just like, and I'm just like, like that looks fun, but I can never, de- I can never dedicate that sort of time and money. Also, all, the, all of the painting that gets done, mm-hmm. all of, most of those figures are individually hand painted, or or you pay someone even more money, which I'm not begrudging them because these are artisans we're talking about. But to paint the figures for you and do all of that sort of thing, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. No. Absolutely. Uh, how about how about you, Kevin? Have you dabbled in the the miniature games or a little bit? Uh, I played a couple rounds of X Wing at Dan's house at Dan's house with him and uh, Dale Henry. Uh, that's about it. But I had to get it when it came out. I had to get the Decimator. <gasps> oh the yeah! Of the Star Wars Galaxies. I had to have it. Oh. Uh, Oh wow, that's very cool. And this this is my very humble ISD Imperial Star Destroyer, but <laughs> it's what I got. Hey, it's it's not much, but it's yours. She may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts. <laughs> uh, 
and and Stephen, uh, Stephen, did I ask you if you did any of the Star Wars tabletops or miniature games? I can't say I have, but the one that probably draws most interest is Imperial Assault. It's like the long campaign one. Oh yeah, I've yep, I've seen that. That's also from uh, Fantasy Flight. If I'm not mistaken, well, very, very cool. Um, yeah, so so moving on from the tabletops, um, I think another I think another um, important aspect um, of the Star Wars gaming scene, um, and something that's come in recently, um, is the mobile scene. Um, now, there's a couple of Star Wars mobile games out there. The most prominent one being Galaxy of Heroes. Um, how how many of you all play Galaxy of Heroes? Okay, one, two. You used to. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so with so with games like you know the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes and others, um, how do you, how do you think it's changed like the landscape in terms of like Star Wars gaming? Do you think? Um, and Clayton, and Clayton, we can start with you. Sure. Um, so I think that more broad, more than anything, it's expanded access. Um, you know, it's it, prior to that, you had to either have you know, a gaming PC or a console or, or you know, all of the tabletop games. Um, you know, all of that requires additional resources that, you know, people may not have. Whereas Galaxy of Heroes, for instance, you can download for free to your phone and just play on the phone that, you know, most people, not everybody, but most people, already have um so i think it's it's brought the the universe and the fandom to a much wider base who then you know are are so interested and you know get to know the characters and get to know this universe that then they want to branch out and find other parts of it and you know maybe they get a game console maybe they get um maybe they start reading the the novels and the the book universe Maybe they get into the comic books, but it's a way, you know, I, I know that there's an argument to be made about um, diluting the fandom and whatnot. And I'll let somebody else make that argument because I think it's, I think the more Star Wars fans there are, um, the more Star Wars will truly you know, live forever. Um, I do. I, I really think that that opening the universe up to not just, you know, the most hardcore fans to let people who may, you know, not be, not know every, um, every single detail of 3PO's building, for instance, should be able to experience the Star Wars universe without that, uh, that level of gatekeeping. And I think mobile games, especially Galaxy of Heroes, opens it up to a lot of folks. Very cool. Kevin, how about yourself? Um, how do you how do you think mobile games like Galaxy of Heroes have changed the landscape in terms of Star Wars gaming? What Clayton said. What Clayton said. <laughs> Fair enough. And I know. James, I'm verbose. Stop me. <laughs> and and James, you you said you played Galaxy of Heroes for a while, um, and then I I guess other things other things came in. Is that correct? Oh, it then, just started getting too expensive to keep up with everybody else because yeah. there's some. There's some real money spending in there sometimes to kind of keep up with all the newest characters and all the best gear yeah. and everything else. But right. no, I played for a number of years and it, it put it in the hands of a lot of younger people to be able to expose them to the some of the not so well-known characters, some of the more legends characters that you might not hear about or just characters that might be just a little one-off here and there. But it was a great way to introduce because even there was characters I didn't even know who they were and I had to go through and start looking them up and find out who they were and I found out they were terrible in the game but then I would have to use somebody else but no it was it was a lot of fun and like like Clayton said it had everybody a lot of people have a phone nowadays and it just puts it into a younger audience's hands potentially yeah no, no, absolutely. That that is the one thing that Star Wars Galaxy, Galaxy of Heroes does does pretty cool. I think is that they're able to you know keep the memory alive of a lot of these legends characters, so like all the Knights of the Old Republic characters, um, for instance, um, that I think 
that I think is really cool. Um, Steven or Jared, um, have you dabbled in any of the mobile games? I messed with um, Star Wars Force Arena when it was out. You know, it, was, it got canceled like in a couple years. It was, I'm not exactly sure what kind of genre it was, but you use like a hero of the light side or dark side. It went across all three eras. And it kind of like had that, was it, I believe it's Clash of Clans thing where you had to charge up like energy and deploy units to attack certain bases and all that. That was pretty much the only mobile game I ever really got into. I think yeah. I think I remember that one. I I think I played it like once, and then it's just like eh, eh, kind of boring. Yeah, it was the way people won was just repetitive stuff. Like there was like clearly best things you can do. Like Poe Dameron just calling airstrikes a million times over. You couldn't mm-hmm. beat him. <laughs> yeah. And Jared, Jared, how about yourself? Did you ever play any of the mobile games? I played a couple of them. I never really got into them. But there is one game. It's not really, I think, an official Star Wars game that I play often. And it is Pizak Cantina. The mobile game on the App Store where you can just play Pizak from the Knights of the Old Republic games. Oh, wow. Is that... that's... Is that something like, is it only for iPhone or can you get it on Android as well? I have an Android, so that's what I play it on. Okay. They had a multiplayer thing and it's just like a Pizak game. You bet and you play a Pizak on it. That's the only thing that's really kept me attached. I played Galaxy of Heroes here and there a bit, but I'm just, it was way too grindy and I couldn't get the players I wanted. Yep. 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 You're right. It's on there. I might have to. Uh, all right, so I'm going to be leaving early to go download that. So I'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> it also has a multiplayer feature that this person is working on building, so you can play against other people online. That's very oh. cool. I'll have to. I might have to check that out. Thanks, Jared. Yeah, I'm installing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a fun game. Uh, all right. Well, let's let's move back, let's move back to the mainline entries. Um, now, now like we've now like we've explained, um, we've each had you know our share of Star Wars video games that we love, and there's a whole variety out there, you know, to choose from. Um, but but the question, but I think the question that some viewers might have is, you know, I've never played a Star Wars game before. What's what should I start with? What's the best one to go for? Um, and, and Jared, we can start with you. What do you, what do you think is the best one that people should start out with? Okay. Oh no. Okay. So, um, I would have to kind of be biased and I would have to say the game to start out with would be good old arcadey Battlefront 2, the classic one. Just, I, something about that game captured a bit of magic about the Star Wars universe, giant battles, amazing stuff that the newer Battlefront games have just never been able to capture. Just the campaign it even had is pretty good, even though it's just Tamara Morrison voicing over a couple of things, same objective as the gameplay. It told a really great and fun story about the 501st going throughout the war. Um, and it's just great fun. You pick it up on Steam, there's even a remaster mod for it that like creates the graphics look amazing now. <laughs> yeah i didn't know about that remastered bit that that may have to get downloaded again I, I do have it on steam but i did not know about that mod thank you sir yeah, yeah. and multiplayer just actually got reannounced for it the servers are all open you can play multiplayer just like the old days on it oh wow yeah i i had battlefront 2 for the ps2 and we didn't we didn't have an online modem for it so it was pretty much just me and my brothers just doing local multiplayer matches um, but it was, it was still a lot of fun. Like, like we 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 got we got a lot out of it. Um, uh, Kevin, how about how about you? What do you think the definitive Star Wars game are people towards? I have to ask them what kind of genre they like to play. Like, if they like strategy games, I'd say either Empire at War or Galactic Battlegrounds. Uh, RPGs would be Kotor and. Uh, action adventure types would be uh, like the dark force games 
say. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is that is a good point to consider is, you know, what what sort of genre, you know, are you into? Are you more of an action sort of action sort of person or are you more strategic? Um, or do you want or do you want something, you know, that's quick and easy? Um, Steve, Steven, how about yourself? Um, what do you what do you think is a good starting point in terms of Star Wars games? Well, if you just want to capture the beauty of the Star Wars universe, I personally, if you really want to get someone in, I'd go with Fallen Order. I really would. It's a really great single player story, great combat, amazing story, and also hints at a sequel, so you can already get caught up for that too. But it's I like Fallen Order because it's not about being a Jedi, it's about becoming a Jedi. And it kind of gives you the whole like story about how he learned the force and all that what happened to him during order 66 and if you want to honestly if you want to start a game i'd go with that it's a really good game yeah no I, no i agree that that game was that game was phenomenal and i no, that was that was the one that surprised me the most because i was very hesitant to you know pre-order it just because just just because of ea but then after i right. keep, we've been burned before Right, you know, fool me, fool me once, you know, fool me once, fool me twice, you know, and all that. And then I hear people, you know, talking about how good it is. So it's just like, I gotta, I gotta get this game, don't I? So, next thing I know, off to the PlayStation Store, downloading it, and yeah, yeah. Now I, I do hope they, you know, I do hope they continue the story or make a game similar. Um, but yeah, no, I think Fallen Order is a great candidate. Um, but but James, um, how about how about you? Are there any old school Star Wars games that you think people might want to gravitate towards? I think we're all just going to keep naming the same games, <laughs> just about. <laughs> but I mean, Knights of the Old Republic is definitely. I mean, I'm a huge RPG fan, so going with that one would be hard to pass up. You can actually get that on. I know the Play Store. Uh, it's like three bucks, I think, and I, I mean, I have it on my phone right now. That I, can I, you up. I did, I did have, I did have that, and I had like a like a Bluetooth controller to play around yeah. with it. Yeah. And yeah. then that, if you want something more new age, then just like Steven said, Fallen Order would definitely be the way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Now they ju- now they just need to get Kotor two on mobile. I don't know why they haven't done that yet. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and unfortunately, it was not nearly as popular as the first one. No, no, it wasn't. But I remember, I remember because I was, I wasn't as a kid. I wasn't able to beat the first Kodor game just because, like, the powers that I had at the end just wasn't enough mm-hmm. to beat Malik. And I kept, and I kept dying. And I was just like, like, I can't, I can't do this. I think I messed up somewhere. Mm-hmm. I should have maxed out on, on certain, on certain certain spells certain force powers i should say um but i was able to beat spells, the second. let's be honest it was still about it was a bioware game like everything else it just subbed in force powers for spells right right no, absolutely i was able to beat the second one no issue so i i don't know the second one had some different concepts especially uh thing i found most helpful was a passive healing region so when you're out of combat, your health would steadily go up. Whereas the first one, it didn't go up. You had to have med packs or go see a doctor. Right. Like right. Well, well, with the final battle with Darth Malak, like there's the first section where you're fighting him, but then there's the second section where you have to destroy like the pods that the Jedi are in by yeah. either stealing their life essence or or using your uh, droid destroy force power use that and i didn't have either of those maxed out so yeah. like i kept dying just like well so malik just came coming just kept coming back and destroying you over and over, and over. pretty much pretty much yeah i was and like it got to a point just like the only other choice i have is to start over and i i don't want to dedicate that time i'm just gonna look at other games um That's yeah fair. you got you gotta break <laughs> up exactly um, Clayton, um, are there are there any games that these guys may not have mentioned that 
you think would be a good candidate? You know, I've been I've been thinking about it actually for the past few days as to what is recent enough that you know the control scheme would not be completely alien to a modern gamer, um, but that also has some of that. Cla- I don't know what it, what it was about you know um, Lucas Arts in the the late '90s and the early 2000s, but it was just one hit after another, more or less, the exception of Phantom Menace and a couple of others, but still. Mm-hmm so many hits at that time period. So I wanted to combine, you know, something that has reasonably modern controls to it and is somewhat accessible to modern gamers with, with something with a bit of that, that classic magic. And I, I think for those who like platformers, for those who like first person shooters, for those who want to go into it and say, okay, I want the Jedi experience. I think the game for them is for all of those people is uh, Jedi outcast. It's it's classic, but it's it's new enough that I think modern gamers won't feel like what is this clunky old game? You know, it still plays fairly fast even to this day. It um, it does. There's a lot of secrets and stuff to unlock. So there's a lot of replayability. You can, if you want to, play the entire game in first person. I don't know why you want to, but you could. Um, and so, you know, for that sort of gamer, I think it would be really, really cool too. And also like the story in that game is just fantastic. Um, so it really captures the magic that, that Star Wars games can be. Yeah, no, I, no, I agree. Like I remember, like I remember, like I got it last year um, for my Switch and just to be able to play that in the palm of my hand, I was just like, like what a time to be alive. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, fantastic. Well, we are starting to run out of time, um, but I just want to do one quick last question. Um, first of all, who's here and played the Star War, the Super Star Wars game for the Super Nintendo? Kevin? I don't have it. You don't have but you've played still, it. Still have it. Still have it. Still you have still it. have it. Have you beaten it? Yeah. Okay. And how and how long did that take you? A couple days. Kevin, are you lying oh. to me right now? <laughs> that is the hardest Star Wars game I have ever played in my life. You think? You think that? That's well. What about like Empire or Return of the Jedi? Like I remember like trying to play Return of the Jedi. Like I don't know. I don't know who. Someone brought their Super Nintendo over to Magfest one year um, for a booth, and they had Super Return of the Jedi. And I kept trying to. I kept trying to beat the first level, and I was getting so close. But like, just couldn't do it. I I think it help. I think it helps if you have a range character and if you have the secret the secret gun. Super Return of the Jedi. I couldn't beat without using a game genie. Oh yeah. Oh uh, game genie. Game genie. Oh, that pretty uh, <laughs> See now. See now. You're really now. You're really dating people with that statement. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Not. No, I remember. Yeah, no, I remember like when I first got when I first got my PS4, um, I got the Battlefront Special Edition, and it came with a code to download four classic Star Wars games, and Super Star Wars was one of them. Um, and so and so I played through that. I did end up beating it, but I think, but I, it was one of those where like I think they had an option for you to do like save states. So. So if you kept dying, you didn't have to go back to the beginning of the level. You could go back to the last point where you put in the save state. So that's what I did. Um, but yeah, I mean, speaking of cheats, there's there's few more classic than uh, you were talking about Gal- Galactic Battlegrounds, James. Uh, the Ewoks running around just taking out everything. Simon the Killer Ewok. Simon the Killer Ewok. Simon Simon the killer Ewok. Simon I, says. I I love that cheat so much. That or uh, Imperial Entanglements to get Star Destroyers, and I think it was, uh, was it All Your Base or Belong to Me, or which was the Death Star cheat? I think, yep, the All Your Base or Belong to Us. Yeah, because yeah, well, that's, that's what it was. Yeah, Galactic Battlegrounds was, could be a hard game. Very. Uh, like, like, some of the campaigns, like, I remember just like, I don't know how people do this, like, and I was just like, you know what, for, you know what, forget it. I'm I'm gonna use a cheat and Simon the Killer Ewok always came through. The, the best I one was that's no moon was the code for that's it. no moon. That, okay, that that was the one. 
That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I mean, and, right. and some of those levels, you'd still need 20 or 30 of the, of Simon to get through them. So I was, I was sitting there going, you know, younger, how in the heck was I supposed to do that with the conventional forces? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, all right. Well, I am getting, well, I am getting the word um, from my colleagues um, that we're, that we are to wrap up. Um, so again, I want to, I want to thank all of you for, for joining us for, I want to thank the viewers for joining us for this panel um, and to the panelists. Um, I especially want to thank you guys for uh, donating your time, talking about your Star Wars gaming memories um, and sharing your insight as to, you know, what, what people should gravitate towards too. So again, thank you very much. Thank you for having us on and for facilitating games. I really appreciate it. It's yeah. been a blast. Yeah, no, absolutely. So with that, so with that out of the way, um, we, we will be, we will be transferring pretty soon um, to our next panel, um, uh, next panel um, for Friday night. And also, and also don't forget um, later tonight, you might be able to see a few of us playing the new Star Wars Squadrons game. Mm. All right. Very well, cool. All right. Well, all right, everyone. Thank you again so much. Um, and you all have a fantastic night.